But hey, hey, it's time. I went with my crusted the clown uh, kind of intro there, Emily, just so you know. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's Stephen and Emily. Um, we've got uh, another show of the iPhotography podcast today. Um, how are you doing, Emily? Are you A-OK? Okay? I am very well. And this uh, topic is very applicable to me at the moment because I'm knee deep in my editing queue. So I need a lot of good music to uh, get me through it. Well, this, this is what they say about long running shows. And we're pretty much about a year into uh, to our podcast. We're about at our anniversary stage. Um, is that they say kind of after after a, a while of kind of producing, every show needs some sort of musical episode. And uh, today is our musical episode, but we're not singing, unfortunately. Thankfully, I'm terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I should bring Rebecca down. She does love her karaoke. <laughs> Maybe I can get her to do a little bit of a song bites. Because um, what we're looking at today is uh, we're talking about putting image uh, putting images putting songs into a playlist because um i don't know if you're like us um obviously we're at the computer a lot of the time throughout our working week so you know we do stick headphones on and we have a little bit of music whether it's in the background whether it's actual music we're editing for images you know obviously you do a lot don't you put a lot of uh, um instrumentals and music to your videos i imagine yes yes um and i think i use music a lot to um dictate the energy of what I'm editing or also Hmm. to perk myself up if I'm lagging a bit. (laughs) <laughs> well, that, that was it. And we're going to kind of come to it. So what we've got um, is that we're going to kind of talk through a couple of songs that, that we listen to during editing, but whether it's songs that are good to go into videos or whether it's songs that just kind of helps the flow of your editing, your, your writing or doing whatever it is. And all the songs that we've, uh, we're going to talk about, we're going to put together, we'll put into a playlist and you'll be able to, to follow, download this playlist on Spotify. So in the link for the description for this podcast, wherever you're finding it, there'll be uh, a little URL that you can actually go and check out the playlist with all these songs and probably some more uh, that we'll talk about. Because, yeah, I, do you have music on all the time when you're at your desk? Yes, I, I, tr- I have tried to do sort of um, audio books and podcasts and things, but I feel like that takes a little bit too much of my mental energy away from the task. So mm. when I do photo edit, uh, I do tend to put music on. And I have noticed that, the choices that you make it sounds crazy but the choices that you make with that will dictate sort of how 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 fast you edit and also the emotion that you're trying to convey as well it's very interesting it's yeah I I was thinking about this this morning because knowing knowing the topic that we're coming into I was thinking about a couple of questions that now let me try and frame this because I've not written the question down that the music that you choose does it influence how you edit um, and is it music that kind of reflects your personality or is it music that you're choosing to reach a certain style? I suppose what I'm trying to say with that, it's like, so if, if you're editing your wedding images, you want your images to look a certain way. Um, now, are you choosing the music to kind of get you into the groove of that kind of thing? Or are you just putting on something that you like regardless? I have... Um... A playlist of, of my own with loads of different artists in that's called slow sad perfect and it's just loads of really sad romantic songs and, and happy romantic <laughs> songs and depending on the couple because sometimes you'll get a romantic couple sometimes you'll get a more upbeat couple I think generally having something a little bit in the romantic mm-hmm. area uh, can really help with with wedding photography editing and in the morning, I think more just upbeat stuff, like even when you're shooting sort of bridal prep, they'll probably have sort of the top 40 on or they'll have like mm. smooth FM on or something and matching what you're listening to, to the vibes of what you're editing. Yeah. However, <laughs> if I am very, very tired and it's first thing in the morning, I do put a little bit of like metal music on very loud. <laughs> So I'm like, the most romantic weddings going on and in my headphones is like, <laughs> so what, what kind of metal bands are we talking? Go on, throw some, uh, <laughs> some examples. Oh, Stephen, this is very niche. My favourite <laughs> is Fit for a King. They are Never very loud, them. very angry. But it proper wakes you up. It's like coffee <laughs> in your ears. Telling me that's like the title of their album or something. I wish it was. I think we should make our own metal album and call it Coffee, Coffee in Your Ears. <laughs> oh my God. Or Audio Espresso or something like that. That's brilliant. Think oh of the puns. Oh, so oh yes. 
yeah, I, I don't even know. I will have to kind of figure out like a name for this playlist to begin with as well. Coffee but maybe in your ears. Coffee in your ears. Um, I think was going to be it. I think I'd, yes. I'd initially named it like just songs to edit to, but no, coffee for your ears. But I think we've started a new thing right. there. So that's Change what you've got to be looking for on Spotify. I, I, um, I shall I shall omit them from the playlist <laughs> because they are quite angry and loud. I'll stick to my the rest of the songs. <laughs> I know, it's pretty. I think coffee can be relaxing, though. I know it kind of perks you up, etc., as well. But it's something that everybody needs, uh, maybe to kind of get you through the day. So maybe that's a good kind of um, uh, kind of analogy for this this pod, uh, this playlist. But um, let's start off with a song, okay? I still got kind of a couple of questions anyway, as well. But we'll kind of uh, we'll mix them up in between. But what what would you put on a playlist? You know, give a, give us a track. Okay, Vonda Shepherd, Maryland. Vonda Shepard and Mary She's Land. amazing. If you ever watched Ally McBeal back in the day, she was like the artist that was in the bar. And um, she does lots of covers of, of romantic songs. And I've watched her all around the world. I've followed her around. I'm terrible. Uh, but she's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so you're quite a fan. It's not just, yeah. you know, just a particular song. You'd like the artist already. Yeah, so some of it is covers. So it's great for sort of editing because there'll be songs that you already know. And then some of them are original songs, which are also brilliant. Excellent. So yeah, so we'll get some Vonda Shepherd into get the playlist. Some Vonda. Get some Vonda in your life. Everybody needs some Vonda. Von- wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. I did. I watched her in uh, Berlin um, and she sang a whole song in German. She's so talented. Oh, is she German? Is she? <laughs> no, she's, she's American. All right. Fair enough. Multi talented. <laughs> Have you ever tried working in complete silence? No music, no, no, no nothing, just you and the computer. Do you know what? It, I think it harks back to my days when I used to work in, in, in offices years and years and years ago. It just feels like work if you mm. don't listen to something. I feel like it, there's always one foot in, in recreation if you're allowed to listen to something you want to listen to while you're getting the work done. Yeah. Um, the closest to that is I do listen to um, like a lot of playlists without lyrics just something yeah. to put you in the vibe. I think film soundtracks, like the Lord of the Rings soundtrack. Oh, yeah. And, uh, so music for Concentration is the one I have on Spotify, which is a whole playlist, mm-hmm. all all full of, 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 of all those cool songs and um, piano as well. I'll find yeah. my fave. I, I think, yeah, you're right. Sometimes you can get lost or in the singing, you know, if you've, if you've got lyrics, you end up kind of just singing it in your head. And especially yeah. I find all the t- if I'm writing, I end up writing some of those lyrics into what I've written and I honestly have to oh. stop and go, oh, hang on. <laughs> Blog writing, it has to be without lyrics. You're totally right. Yeah. Yeah, but photo editing, it's 50-50. Uh, one artist which you can add to the playlist, and I'll, I'll probably send you over how to spell it, is, is Olaf Arnold's. He did uh, the soundtrack for Broadchurch. Did uh, you ever watch Broadchurch? I've heard of it. Is that oh, with David Tennant? And Olivia Coleman. It's so good. So some of those music, some of those songs have lyrics and some of them are just like moody, seascapey kind of music. It's like a murder mystery by the sea. Yeah. Uh, very emotive. Really, really good. I have that on all the time. <laughs> Very good. Oh, no, I've, I've, I've seen maybe it, like trailers for it, adverts for it, but yeah, never. I don't think I've ever actually watched an episode of it. Um, I'm going to throw a song in. I don't Go know on. if this is a little bit more, um, I'm not say mainstream, uh, Fleet Foxes, um, song called Mykonos. Ooh, ever heard of it? I have not. Clearly, okay. I listen to really weird stuff. <laughs> well, I think this could be a good, in, you know, we, we'll have like a good kind of con- contrast of songs, really, because yeah. I'm looking down the list of mine. And and yeah, I suppose a lot of my music uh, or my interest in music are maybe kind of more folky, I would say. I think just trying to kind of generalize the, the ones that I've got on the list here, saying that I've got like a Radiohead song towards the end. Uh, nice. But on, on the whole kind of, let's say, singer, songwriter, folky type of music. Um, I remember the song, it was in a film with Robert Downey Jr. Um, due date um I don't, have you ever seen that one yes I think with so. zach G- 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 oh, yeah, I know the mean. guy I in the hangover mean. i can't pronounce yeah. his surname but yeah it, it, it's in that and it's done kind of quite nicely but again it, it's kind of quite chilled out i mean a lot of the songs by fleet foxes are but a particular one called mykonos um another one i'd like to throw in um angus and julia stone um it's called big jet plane um so it's it, i think it's a little bit different from the um we're going, oh, I've forgotten how it goes. And I didn't, I promised I wouldn't sing. Um, oh, well, we're leaving on a jet plane. It's a little uh... bit different from that one, but it has the same title as well. But again, in terms of a type of artists that they are, it's quite chilled out, kind of quite mellow. So you could put it on kind of pretty low in the background um, and those would be kind of quite 
quite kind of I suppose easy easy listening I think that's the kind of title isn't it really that type of music but do you do you always kind of go in a particular order when you put your playlist on or do you stick it on shuffle so I'm terrible for sticking everything on shuffle which is a recipe for disaster because (laughs) it might be a metal song and then ace of bass and then you know anything so you have them on the same playlist I I just my liked playlist is just everything I've ever liked so it's just it goes all over the place it's not great so when (laughs) I try and narrow it down a bit when I'm photo editing (laughs) so you can literally go from kind of thrash metal to kind of right Justin Bieber in here (laughs) yeah got Eminem This this playlist is going to be the most random thing anyone's ever seen. But throw us another song then. So we've got we've got old Vonda and we've got old Laugh the Snowman. Um, yep. So throw, throw us another one. So another artist that I think is very good for sort of as you say easy listening but generally upbeat is a band called Third Eye Blind. Yes, they're uh, very summery, uh, very chill, mm-hmm. not too heavy at all. And if, if you just need a little something to perk you up while you're editing yeah. and put a smile on your face, it's my summer soundtrack, Third Eye Blind. They're quite, are they still going? I, they I thought are. they were kind of like a big, a bit of a 90s thing, really. They're kind of like, like Weezer. Yeah, they got big in the 90s, but they're still bringing out really good stuff. And mm-hmm. um, they hate despise the song that got them famous which was semi-charmed life yeah. and every time i watch them live the, the the singer just turns to the guitarist and goes i hate this song and then starts playing it <laughs> i love him <laughs> i i reckon that's so true of many bands that yeah. Y- yeah when you get to a point you have like one song that is like your famous one that everybody wants you to play you think i'm just so tired of hearing that song yeah I bet they just want they either wish they'd never written it as well or just wish they could just go no we're never playing that yeah. one again as well I'm, I'm sure i don't remember reading i don't know who it was but there was one particular band whose song got super famous that they just refused to play it at uh, concerts and gigs i yeah. can't think for the life of me who it was but yeah they just they just didn't want to hear it again or at least catch themselves singing it really it's it's a shame in a way but yeah, yeah. i wish more bands would do that to be honest because like third eye blind for instance it was 25 30 years ago that they brought that song out so they've got enough back catalogue to <laughs> to not play it and yeah. they hate playing it so much it's uh yeah but yeah very good band very summery mild rock i like yeah. them very much so you, you have kind of quite a uh, a kind of smorgasbord of different types of genres that that you kind of listen to is there anything that you find you tend not to listen to whilst editing is there any particular types of music i like um emotional songs whether that's sad and melancholy or upbeat Mm -hmm. or or soundtracks that make you feel one thing I would probably steer away from is sort of the the, the pop genre where it's very much you're designed to turn it off you just put it on in the background and it doesn't really emote in one way or the other yeah I I think photography is very emotional uh when you come to editing and the choices that you make and the colors that you want to bring out Mm. so I, I think picking a team emotionally musically is is the way so anything that's a little bit middle of the road yeah right more songs we need more songs in our playlist go on okay. you'll go again and then I'll, I'll i'll throw a couple in okay annie defranco annie, they, a, you pick some people with really cool names i know right she has some fantastic uh folky songs she's an incredible guitarist she's another artist that i've gone around places following around and um I'll, I'll i think 32 flavors is a fantastic song yeah um but she's got loads of good ones she's another one that you could just really get into she's got a lot to say she's basically a, a poet with a guitar oh okay well that's kind of quite interesting yeah because you find they're much more lyrically informed in, in mm. those instances and i do i i love kind of songs that actually have got substance in mm-hmm. respects to kind of the what the actual story is within the image uh, within the image <laughs> talking about photography within the song itself yeah. um saying that the one that i've chosen um is from jesus and mary chain called just like honey um i i reckon you'll you'll recognize it even if you don't know the actual uh the title of it um it's no, not that it comes from but it's featured at the very very end of the film lost in translation um have you ever seen that I have uh, moons ago. I have yes. Oh, absolutely love it. It's literally probably one of my top two. It's in there. Um, and it, What's it's, the other one? 
Um, well, ironically, <laughs> without going too much of a tangent. No, no, no. Um, it's a song. Uh, song. Oh, it's a film called Her. Um, right. So the story, without going too much on a tangent here, is that Lost in Translation was written uh, all made by Sophia Coppola. So that's she's the daughter of Francis Ford. Uh, Coppola or Capella, I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, and basically, the story was about her breakup with Spike Jones, um, another director. I think it's Spike Jones. Um, and basically, then years later, Spike Jones went on to write this film called Her, uh, which was effectively the retaliation, not not a negative retaliation, but basically kind of describing Inside the story. Of of from that and they're totally different films in respects to the kind of the actual storyline because in spike jones's film um it's joaquin phoenix falls in love with his computer um it's very very bizarre but he gets this kind of really kind of modern operating system like siri um who's got this amazing ai and the girl that voices siri is scarlett johansson who is also the main protagonist in Lost in Translation. Oh, so cool. I would need a, to watch both of these. Definitely back back. watch them. Yeah, 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 definitely watch them. But at the very, very end of Lost in Translation is uh, Just Like Honey. And it's a lovely kind of very, very passive song. It's a little bit different from a lot of their other work in some instances. Um, but certainly, you know, I think, again, in terms of just background mellow music, very very simple um and as with kind of my next choice uh, much more contemporary um billy eilish everything i wanted now i think a lot of her work tends to be kind of quite ambient in a sense but i think that's just the way that she sings are you are you a fan of the eilish i am a fan of the eilish i like uh, in a world full of loud belters she's very quiet and you have to listen to what she has to say but she has an incredible tone to her voice mm. Uh, and the first album in particular, I've got it on vinyl. I'm a big fan. Um, oh, wow. But the second one, I've, I've taken a bit of time to get into it because she's gone in a bit of a different direction with a little bit more guitars and a little bit, yeah, a little bit weirder, less electronic, I'd say. But I'm excited to properly sit down and listen to it. I, I lose track of like albums, etc. I mean, especially with her, she it feels like anyway and I know it's not her decision but songs come out like every other week and I don't know that I would have thought they're all from the same album or I think it'll get to the point where people don't even release albums it's just singular songs but Mm -hmm. she what she got two albums out now has she Mm -hmm. yeah I never would have known that but yeah I just thought they were all coming out from this one amazing compilation (laughs) something or other as well but but yeah that's 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 another one of ours uh, another one of, of mine that I throw into the into the mix really um I mean, is it, do you have like a, a stock library of songs that you go to for when you're actually using songs or music in your videos? Because I know obviously you do a lot of videography and not just photography, but where do you kind of go looking for, for music for that? Yeah, so there's a, there's a number of different platforms that allow you to do this. You've got Soundstripe, Artlist, Musicbed, other ones are available. I'm subscribed to Soundstripe at the moment, which is giving me some joy. And Stephen, picking the music to uh, a highlight film for a wedding is the hardest part of anything. Really? (laughs) Because you've got to find something that matches the couple and their relationship that isn't cheesy, that has the right sort of crescendos where you need, that has the quiet bits so you can put some of the speeches in and stuff. I guess spend so much of the edit just trying to find the music. Um, (laughs) And sometimes, as you say, it might be going onto Soundstripe and putting a playlist of contenders in until I can narrow it down. Uh, I mean, well, that's that's kind of your background, isn't it? For anybody that that doesn't know you um, in depth, you come from an audio technician's background, am I right to say? Yes, I did my degree in uh, sound design. Uh, so it was more for film and media, but there was also elements of, of live sound uh, engineering as well. And I play the drums and yeah. for the sort of one of the final modules, it was getting into a studio and, and recording and mixing and mastering several songs. It was good fun. Oh, so do you have uh, your own kind of album of, of songs that you've drummed on or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <gasps> and my husband plays guitar and sings. You like a little band if you, in your own right, like, you know, the, yeah. the kind of the, the modern day Von Trapps. The <laughs> <laughs> drums yeah, my, and <laughs> my, my living room, we've had to throw out our living room table to make room for like my massive drum kit. <laughs> So you're, down... you're, never mind Von Trapps you're more like the white stripes actually aren't yeah, you now you are. ho- I'm hopefully a little bit of a better drummer than her 
Bum, it, bum, threw bum, me, bum, it threw bum, me for bum. years as to the relationship because they always kept lying about who they were in terms of yeah. relationship. They always made out they were brother and sister. Um, and it turned out they were husband and wife, and then they were divorced. Yeah. Um, it was very, very bizarre. But yes, you you are you are a much better drummer than Meg White. Um, Thank you. I, no, not, no, no offense to Meg White. Not she's, taking anything away from Meg. She's visceral in her playing style. But that but that's it. I think, you know, if you want to be able to kind of, yeah, maybe kind of like play drums or, you know, learn drums, then, yeah, I think that's kind of good just a dum, 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 dum. And in fairness, the guitar's not particularly tricky in those early parts either. Um, Even I I, I can play it. (laughs) I don't think, I can play it too. I don't (gasps) think um, music has to be overly technical to be effective. And often the easiest, the most easy listening and the most effective songs are very easy to play. Yes, yes, yeah, very true, and that's it. I think, yeah, the the, the most effective ones definitely of the, the simplest. Um, any more offerings for this playlist? Yes, let's go with some Counting Crows. <sighs> do you like Counting Crows? I do like Counting Crows. Uh, my favorite album is This Desert Life. I just think they're a very good band, but they're quite inconsistent sometimes. And I think that one's like bang, got hanging yeah. around, got Speedway, got colorblind yeah that's Great yeah album. very very oh they're all from the same album those mm-hmm. as well um i remember mr jones um yes. i think that's probably that that and colorblind are probably the, the two that stand out for me I th- i'm sure they, yes oh. did they do a cover of big yellow taxi they did it's a really good one yes. yeah i remember that one i'm sure i've, I've seen that or heard of it in a, in a few places but yeah that's a good one to add um i said even though my my playlist itself the you know the the, the most of the artists on there are kind of folky um one of the latter ones i wanted to add was a radiohead song but now i have to add a caveat to this because i don't know if it's going to be on spotify because it's a cover yeah. um so it's fake plastic trees and it's by Phoebe Bridges. I uh, love Phoebe Bridges. I was watching this on YouTube in the wee hours of the morning last weekend. Oh, my God. Right. <laughs> this like, song, that version on, on YouTube is so good. It's got probably I'm about, obsessed with Phoebe Bridges. However, millions viewers, I am at mm. least 50% of that view count. Steven, I can you're, you're guarantee unfolding you. like a flower. It's oh, such a good song. Such it's good beautifully cover. done. And in, in the yeah. church as well. So, yeah, you may, we may just kind of have to set tape go to uh, YouTube to watch this. It's uh, Fake Plastic Trees by Phoebe Bridges and Arlo Parks on the um, piano. And Arlo Parks, I think she's just won, hasn't she just won an award? It was almost like the, I don't know, it's like an Ivan Novello or I've forgotten the, the name of the award for like the breakout ar- artist that they do. Um, it's gone over my head now, I'm afraid. Um, but either way, extremely, extremely talented um, uh, musician. But yeah, that song, I said, I don't think it's going to be on Spotify, but please go and look for it. Um, how she effort- effortlessly just sings such a song. I, th- I would say it's, it's pretty much better than the original. Yes, and all of Phoebe Bridges' songs are brilliant. She's one that I do listen to quite a lot. I didn't bring it up because she's quite morbid. <laughs> <laughs> like she dresses in like a skeleton. She's a skeleton costume. <laughs> um, but I think she's like she's like Billie Eilish, where she can do the impressive vocals, but it's all about the story and the tone. Yes, and I, I think she has a lot of an interesting stories to tell. I love Georgia by her and. Moon song. I'm going to send you a Phoebe Bridges playlist now, Steve. Yes, please do, because I'm I'm literally stuck on like four songs of her. Which, well, the cover of this one, um, Motion Sickness, was the first one that got me Brilliant. into her. Um, Funeral um, just happened to kind of come across in a playlist one day, and that stuck with me forever. And Punisher. Um, are, are like the main ones that, that have stuck with me as well but yes please do for anyone else that's listening who wants to, something else to get into um Phoebe Bridges um I think she's, she's absolute rising talent um right okay I know we're gonna we'll probably will add more songs to this anyway but kind of throw us in one more and we can kind of wrap ourselves up here then okay UK similar uh band to sort of Phoebe Bridges's daughter very atmospheric uh, and she also does soundtracks to games as well. So if you like things that are instrumental, she has some incredible emotive instrumentals as well as sort of the heartfelt songs. Mm. Is it Youth, the song uh, you would youth choose? Youth is a beautiful song. That's the only um, one I know. <laughs> so she did uh, an album called Music from Before the Storm, mm. which was the soundtrack to Life is Strange, I think, that the game that's on all of the 
the thing on all of, all of the things, all, all of the, the things. <laughs> um, so there's there's a lot of um, instrumentals and also really really cute sad songs as well. Oh, but How Not to Disappear is also a fantastic album from hers. I shall send you all of the recommendations. Yeah, the we will We will stick them all together. So this is what we do and basically getting kind of opinions and, and chatting over them. And we'll put some more on there because there's, there's a couple more that I've got, but I'm not going to go through. This is going to be the most morbid, melancholy <laughs> playlist, Stephen. <laughs> I think it helps because, like we said, music kind of informs the pace of your edit, but it shouldn't be a distraction necessarily. It, it, it should be like a, a complement to the mood and just puts you in the right time of frame of mind. And, and I'm sure people, some people will be listening to this going to hate that song. Yeah, no, don't like that. Yeah. And that's fine. But I think there's an importance. I, th- I think it's easier to edit and keep a creative flow having music whatever your choices are but having music playing when you're editing i mean have you ever actually tried sticking a pair of headphones on whilst you're out shooting obviously not with weddings ah do you know i have when i do street photography because i find street photography a little bit uh, intimidating you know sometimes mm. when you have to sort of people are aware that you're taking photos and you may be taking photos of people out and about yeah. so sticking some uh, headphones in and, and listening to music kind of puts me out of that reality in a way it's just I know exactly what you mean yeah it yeah. puts you in your own little world and you don't get so conscious and you you don't hear things you know if someone beeped at you or anything like that you wouldn't hear it you just yeah you just concentrate in on what you're shooting I mm-hmm. I've done that a couple of times when we were in London I, I did it for a couple of days and I found it much more cathartic that I wasn't worried about if somebody looked at me whilst I took a picture. It's just like, oh, I'm in my own head and I just treated everything as a different reality. Um, but yeah, that's, that's such best thing ever. Go for a walk with your camera, stick some amazing music on and you're in a world of your own and there's nothing but what you're seeing and what you want to capture. It's such a good thing to do. Yeah. Very, very, very kind of good artistic uh, kind of way to live or just way to work. Excellent. There we go. Excellent. I thought this was only be a kind of a short podcast, just because throwing our uh, top tips in as well. But it's lasted a little bit longer than I thought. But hopefully, if you've been listening all the way through, you've enjoyed it. And um, as I said, we'll put the description, uh, sorry, put the link in the description for this podcast, wherever we end up calling it. But you can just find the iPhotography photography <laughs> account. Music to cry to. <laughs> Music to cry to. Yeah. Coffee for your ears and music to cry to. <laughs> We'll, we'll put we'll put an agreed title and especially the link to it in the description for the podcast anyway so once we've kind of hammered out the name for it you'll find all these songs in there and many more uh, and feel free to make some more suggestions if there's any other songs that you think we should kind of add to that that kind of continues the vibe um then kind of please let us know you can kind of get in touch with us via email or social media or anything like that as well um but that's it for today uh, that's it for this week uh, we'll be doing another episode uh next week so there's normally kind of one every tuesday and uh, yeah so thank you very much em i hope you've uh, enjoyed our musical chat and you yes, can go off and been, uh, been listen wonderful. to some Vonda and some Annie DeFranco. I've written them all down here so I can try and remember them myself. <laughs> but you can go off to listen to your thrash metal to kind of get you ready for the afternoon. No, it's been a pleasure thank you very much. you're very welcome thank you very much and thank you very much for listening guys it's been an absolute pleasure please keep following the podcast and we'll catch you in the next show thank you now <laughs>